Rub up your engines! Welcome to Mechanic Monday, where I spend all my time checking out products and talk about ones that are not only handy, but they serve a very good purpose. Now, if you bought one of those cars that has the canister plastic oil filter housing that you have to take the plastic canister off, then change the paper element and put it all back together when you change the oil, you're gonna love this. I made a whole video on why I can't stand those plastic canister filters. Why do you wanna go back into the past? When I was a young mechanic, cars didn't even have oil filters. Then some of them had these canister filters, but at least the canister was made out of metal. And at least the metal ones didn't break. They were metal. You had to take the metal off, put a new paper filter inside, replace the O-ring, and put it back on. But then, for decades and decades, everybody's used normal oil filters. Just plain spin-on oil filters like this old Chevy and all of the cars here they all have spin-on oil filters they only make sense this one's down here you just unscrew it screw the new one in no mess no fuss easy job but then some moronic engineers got out perhaps with some of the green people they go oh, this pollutes so they decided to make plastic canisters that the paper filter fit inside you to take them apart and the plastic can crack break it can stick on be hard to get off these are pretty easy to get off plastic ones they often break so like i always say don't get mad get even this company baxter they make replacements it's a simple thing to do and then you don't have to worry about the plastic crack and you not be able to get it off and say no heck with it i won't change the filter i'll just leave the old dirty one in which is a bad thing this is solid steel well made and it's a very simple thing to replace now unfortunately i don't have one of these canister filter cars here because i would personally not buy one i think it's a stupid design but it's very simple once you remove the plastic housing with the canister inside you just throw that away then this piece fits in where it went you can see it's very high quality steel it's got o-ring here it's got an o-ring here so it just screws in get a long extension bar in a socket because it's got a nut here to tighten it up very easy job to put it in and then once this baxter adapter is in all that's sticking out is what you're normally going to see then you get a regular toyota filter and voila it just screws right on so when you change your oil you just screw it off and that's it and of course as a tip always lubricate the rubber gasket on your oil filter before you screw it on that way it will stay nice and sealed because the oil lubricates it and makes it set right but then it will come off because if you don't lubricate it this gets really hot that gasket can stick on and then you'll have a problem taking the old filter off put a little oil on it get it nice and tight it'll come off easy next time and you'll never ever have to deal with those stupid plastic crappy canister filters where you got to get the old one out and make a mess oils all over the place you might break them when you take them off they could crack from the heat I've seen that happen this is solid steel this thing will outlast your car so kudos to Baxter performance for making a great product that bypasses a very stupid design and they make them for various other cars not just Toyotas now the next thing I'm talking about is a cool tool inside this little carrying case it's an automotive short finder it's a fantastic invention but it's been adopted for automotive Motive use. This particular one I got on Amazon for 39 bucks. What a deal. And here's how it works. You hook this up to the car, it will emit a tone on the wire you hook it up to. And this wirelessly picks up the tone. So you hear the tone as you follow the wire. And when the tone goes away, that's where the short is. Simplicity itself. Simple to use too. As nutty as it sounds, you connect the black wire to your positive battery. Then you turn this on tone. You can see the tone light came on. And then hook this up to any wire that you're checking for a short. In this case, we'll do the alternator wire here. Then we turn the receiver on and go to the wire and we'll hear the tone then you merely follow the wire until the noise stops and where it stops that's where the short is now the cool thing is since this is originally invented by the phone company they got wires going through walls and stuff this will pick it up through a wall so it will also pick it up when you go through 
the firewall of the car, it goes under a fender, it picks up distances that you'd be surprised at. No more having to rip up carpets to check wiring, you can just go right through it with this cool device because it's wireless. And ironically enough, I like this idea, using wireless technology to fix wires in a car. Ha <laughs> ha, little irony there. Now when I was a younger mechanic, they had versions of this that cost a small fortune, but like I say, I paid 39 bucks for this. And it's not even a one trick pony, because watch this. We go from tone to put it to continuity, and it measures that there's a break in the wire. Of course, if you connect them together, there's no break, right? It's continuous. So what does this thing do? It's green, it shows that it has continuity. So if you think this is short in a wire, you stick one end on one end of the wire, and one end on the other. Now of course you have to be logical here and understand electricity to do that. You have to disconnect both ends of the wire to whatever they're plugged into because you're only measuring the wire. And once you do that, as you can see now, the green light is none, that means this is short in that wire. If the wire had no short, then you would see the green light on. So if the green light doesn't come on, you know there's a short. If it doesn't come on, you know there's a short in the wire. But where's the short? Well, then you switch this thing to tone, then you would use the receiver, then when you would use Use the sending unit here and the receiver to find the short. So even though you can't see electricity, now you can hear it and find and fix shorts. For 39 bucks, I gotta say, it's one heck of a tool. Now the last thing I'm gonna talk about is a very good high-level scan tool that Bosch sent me. This is a Bosch ADS-525X. I've been using it for about six months now. And I gotta say I'm impressed. Now it is a $1,900 scan tool, but it's amazing what it can do. Of course, it just plugs in like any normal scan tool, but the similarities end there. It can do all kinds of diagnostic. Let's start it up and show you. Auto ID. It knows immediately what vehicle it is. There it is. And while it's setting itself up, check this out. It shows the voltage. 11.8, that means the battery on this vehicle needs changing soon. But once we start it, it goes up to 13.8, 13.9, so we know the alternator's working at least. Things you might forget to do even me as a professional mechanic, like check the alternator and battery. This thing does it automatically every time you plug it in. Of course it reads trouble codes and does data stream like anyone, but it does all kinds of other insane things. Look at all the special tests it can do. Transmission, tire pressure, occupants, four-wheel drive, starting control, ABS, traction control, airbag, meters, air fuel controls, ACM inhibit, activate the variable valve time, catalytic misfire, control all cylinders fuel cut, control each cylinder one at a time, control the variable valve, control the ship position, injection volume, on and on and on. Check this, it can even do a cylinder compression test. Operate with ignition on, engine off. So, the engine's off, the ignition is on. Put it in park, continue. Now with it on, you can crank the engine. If you want to do a correct engine compression test on a car, you got to make sure that it's not getting ignition and fuel or you'll get a false reading. This shuts all that off so you can do it. Pretty neat. You got an EVAP problem, you can do a manual EVAP system check. Here it goes, it's preparing for the check. Takes a whopping 10 seconds. Two, one, zero. Should be crawling all over the car with gauges hooking things up. Sometimes you got to drop the gas tank. This baby does a lot of stuff for serious repair. You're working on airbag systems, ABS. This can do it all. And of course, for serious mechanics, it does an enhanced vehicle scan. It can do all the controllers. Now, it takes a little while to go through all this stuff, but look what it's checking. If you're a guy who wants to fix everything on your car, or a mechanic who says, well, I can't work on that stuff, I don't have the information, got a lot more information with this. If you're worried about you're gonna miss something, hey, this found three DTCs. No more saying, oh, I can't fix your car because there's no check engine light on. Ha! This does a lot deeper than that. And if you want to pay a little bit extra, you get live wiring diagrams. Let me tell you something. I have $6,000 scan tools that don't touch what this thing can do. And it's 1900 bucks. I'm not giving them away, no. But if you're a serious mechanic, hey, this is about the best deal you're going to find out there. Now this is an ADS 525X. They have a fancier version. As you can see on my phone here, the ADS 625. If we scroll up a little, that's $4,400. For less than two grand, I'm impressed with this thing. Let me tell you, it's blown me away. 
And since this is Mechanic Monday, I'm going to be giving away one of these cool electric short finders. To have a chance to win, place a clean, non-offensive comment on the YouTube comments below, and a winner will be chosen randomly by computer to get this great little tool for finding electrical shorts in your car, and of course, in your phone line too, if you are old enough to have a landline. That's what this thing was originally invented for. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.